ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان الاصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد الله يحفظكم حياكم الله اخوان والاخوات it gives me honor to have finally after many years arrived walillahi alhamd in redin for the first time and what i see here mashallah tabarak wa ta'ala only brings joy to the heart I ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high that he gives us tawfiq and likewise blesses this muhadara and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides my tongue to that which is correct regarding speaking of the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed it is a big mas'uliya and big responsibility speaking regarding allah and his religion and his messenger wa ma ana ila faqir allah azza wa jal today's topic kum salam rahmatullah that the brothers requested was the judgment day regarding the hereafter and what will take place regarding the hereafter now the hereafter is in many aqsam in different categories so there's no way that we can cover everything in one night so perhaps this will be a reason for me to come down again bi idhnillah to redin but i start off by mentioning al iman bil yawm al akhir rukun min arkan al iman to have iman and belief regarding the hereafter is one of the pillars of iman wa yawm al akhir huwa yawm al qiyamah alladhi yub'athu fi an nas li hisab wal jaza and the hereafter is the day of judgment when mankind will be resurrected for the reckoning and regarding having belief of that great day then ahl al ilm have mentioned three affairs regarding this the first al amr al awwal al iman bil bath that we should have belief regarding the resurrection and that is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring out from the graves the corpses and the bodies resurrect the bodies on that great day and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about all of the bodies regarding whatever state those bodies were in at the time of their death allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the quran wa darab lana mathalan wa nasiya khalqah qala man yuhyi al-'idham wa hiya ramim kul yuhyi alladhina anshaha awwala marra wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions he sets forth for us an example and forgets his own creation and he says who will give life to these bones after they are rotten and they have become dust then allah says say rather it is he the one that brought them about from the first time from nothing and verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of his creation whatever state ikhwan we die whether you die in a fire or whether your body is chopped up the ittiqad and the belief of ahlus sunnah wal jamaa that you will be resurrected 
and your body will be put back together. As we have in the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ رَجُلَ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ لَمَّا أَيْسَ مِنَ الْحَيَاتِ أُوْسِ أَحْلَهُ إِذَا مُتُّ فَجْمَعُ لِي حَطَبًا كَثِيرًا The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, regarding an individual, that when he has lost hope of life, meaning that death is close to him, he advised his family that if I was to die, then you gather for me a lot of wood, then you kindle a fire, and you burn me in that fire. And then up until all the flesh has gone and only the bones remain. And then you, sprint, then you crush and grind the bones. And then he said that you sprinkle this into the sea on a windy day. طيب. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered his body and questioned him, فَلِمَا فعلت? Why did you order your family with this? And they said, خشيتو. Oh, خشيتو. And then he mentions, فَغَفَرَ الله. He said that I was fearful of you, Allah, Azza wa Jal. So due to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. But the point that we are trying to strike, that whatever hal that you die, whatever state your body is in, it is our belief that your body will be brought back and you will be raised on that day for the reckoning. Likewise, we should have belief that on that day, we will be held to account of that what took place in this life. The reckoning the hisab will be on that day. And likewise, there are many proofs for that. When we have the hadith, a very long hadith, but I'll mention a juz from the hadith. That long hadith, when the Messenger وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will draw near to the believer and will place a screen over him and he will screen him and he will be questioned regarding his sins and then he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you recognize this meaning the sin and then he will affirm this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say the same way that I screened you I will screen you on this day but as for the munafiqun and the disbelievers for verily they will be called out in front of everybody Ra'us al-khalaik in front of all of the creation and their reckoning will be done in front of all of these individuals. Taib, proof once again that there will be a reckoning. There will be this standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third category is that after the reckoning, then there is the masir ila khair or masir ila shar. Either your destination will be paradise or either your destination will be the hellfire. There is no two other ways. And our iman regarding the paradise and likewise regarding the hellfire is that we believe regarding the Jannah Nar, the first and foremost, Al-I'tiqadul Jazim bi al Haq that we believe with certainty regarding the hellfire and paradise that they exist and we have belief in them ilm al yaqeen and likewise we believe that the hellfire wait second there is an announcement um, a brother uh, with, uh, driving a Honda with the plate W484PDP to move their car now, please. Jazakallah khairan. Regarding the hellfire, Ikhwan, and regarding the paradise, we believe that they are now present. As the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lil muttaqeen. Verily, the paradise has been prepared for the muttaqeen. And likewise, we have the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise uiddat lil kafirin the hellfire has been prepared for the disbelievers and likewise we have the statement of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
يتلعت في الجنة فرأيت أكثر أهلها الفقراء وطلعت في النار فرأيت أكثر أهلها النساء. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that verily I was shown paradise and I saw that the majority of the inhabitants of paradise were the poor people and I was shown the hellfire and the majority of the individuals in the hellfire were women. Likewise, from the itikad and the belief that we shut off the akhirah is that paradise and likewise the hellfire is eternal. It will never come to an end. قال الله عز وجل ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإن له النار جهنم خالدين فيها أبدا. Allah subhanahu wa taala he says to whomsoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, then verily for him is the hellfire, a hellfire which is eternal, and he will be there within eternally. Here the maksud of those individuals, meaning that will be in the hellfire. That will eternally be in the hellfire are not the Muslims. A side point. It is the kuffar. Those who died upon disbelief. They are the ones that will eternally be in the hellfire. After giving that short introduction, Ikhwan, like I said, when we talk about the akhira, we can talk about the barzak. What takes place in your graves. When we talk about the akhira, we can talk about the standing of their reckoning and likewise we can talk about Ikhwan the final two destinations which is paradise and likewise the hellfire so after giving this introduction Ikhwan there are a number of series of lectures that we can do one is regarding the barzak the time of death al maut and the barzak the time in the grave and likewise the hisab the reckoning of the individuals that will receive their records in their right hand and they will be from paradise and the individuals that will receive their records in the left hand and they will be from the hellfire all of this ikhwan can be divided into many lessons but what i wish to do today is to mention some of the athar of the salaf why they were so fearful of the hellfire why at night they could not sleep they were narrations regarding the companions and the nation that it was said to them that the people they sleep while you stay awake tossing and turning and it was mentioned the thought of the akhira the thought of the hellfire is not causing them to sleep Likewise, you used to have from the Salaf that used to go down to the blacksmith and just to hear the roar of the fire to remind him of the reality of the fire. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and likewise used to speak to himself when he used to draw closer to the fire. He used to draw closer to the fire and say, Ya Umar, he say, Ya Umar. He used to say, O oh, Umar, can you have sabr, meaning upon this fire? And we know, Ikhwan, that the heat of the hellfire is 69 times more than any fire that exists on the face of the earth. Any form of heat that we have here Think of any different type of fire that you have, whether it be the lava, the heat of the lava. The Jahannam is 69 times more powerful than that. So what was it, Ikhwan, that sometimes would not allow these companions to sleep? What was it that when they would only merely see a fire, that it would bring tears to their eyes? Inshallah, we will mention some ahadith regarding what caused him to be in that state and what it was. Regarding the final destination, Ikhwan, 
Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, إِذَا مَاتَ أَحَدُكُمْ أُرِدَ عَلَيْهِ مَكْعَدَتُ عُدْوَةً وَأَشِيَّةً إِمَّا النَّارُ وَإِمَّا الْجَنَّةِ فَيُقَالْ هَذَا مَكْعَدُكَ حَتَّى تُبْعَثُ إِلَيْهِ The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, when any one of you dies, his destination is displayed before him in the morning and likewise in the afternoon, either in the hellfire or either in paradise. And he is said to him, this is your place till you are resurrected and sent to it. In your graves, you will have an idea which destination that you are going. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اقتسمت الجنة والنار إلى ربها فقالت جنة يا ربي ما لها لا يدخل إلى ضعفاء الناس وسقطهم وقالت النار ياني أوثرت بالمتكبرين فقال الله تعالى للجنة أنت رحمتي وقال للنار أنت عذابي أصيب بك ما أشاء ولكل واحد منكما ملؤها رواه البخاري Regarding the hellfire, before I translate the hadith, why is Jannah and why is the Jahannam created? What's the hikmah and the wisdom behind paradise and the hellfire? This hadith explains. The Messenger Sallallahu Wasallam said that the hellfire quarreled, طيب, quarreled with paradise. It quarreled with the paradise in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the paradise said, Oh my Lord, what is with me? That only the weak, they enter me. The weak and the humble. And the hellfire said, Yani, what is wrong with me? Oh, sorry, the hellfire has mentioned what I have been favored with the arrogant people. I have been favored with the arrogant people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred and said to Jannah, you are my mercy. And then he said to the hellfire, you are my punishment. And both of you shall be filled. The hellfire has a purpose. And likewise, Jannah. Let me tell you about some of the sifat. Some of the sifat and the attributes of Jahannam. It has gates, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned. إِذَا دَخَلَ الرَّمَضَانِ فُتِعَ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَغُلِكَتْ أَبْوَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَسُلْسِلَةَ الشَّيَاطِينَ رواه البخاري. Abu Hurairah narrates that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when Ramadan, the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of the heavens are opened and the gates of the hellfire are closed and the devils are chained. Are chained. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمْ لَوْ مَوْعِدَةٌ أَجْمَعِينَ لَهَا سَبْعَةُ أَبْوَابٍ لِكُلِّ بَابٍ مِنْهُمْ جُزْعَ مَقْسُومٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, and surely the hell is promised for a place for them all. It has seven gates. For each of those gates is a special class of sinners assigned to that. Regarding the depth and regarding the size of the Jahannam, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ مَا أَقُلَّ زِمَامٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلِكٍ يَجُرُّونَهَا رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمْ The brothers are asking, can you move forward please? Because there are more brothers coming in. If you can, Ikhwan, try to move forward. Jazakallahu khairan. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, that the hellfire will be brought forth on the day of resurrection. The day of resurrection, the hellfire will be brought forth. And it will have 70,000 ropes. And each rope will be held by 70,000 angels. Dragging it along. So the hellfire will have 70,000 ropes. And each rope will be held by 70,000 angels. La ilaha illallah. Likewise, we have the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Abu Hurairah, 
كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا سمع وجبة فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتدرون هذا أبو حرر he narrates and he mentions that we were sitting with the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم then we heard a terrible sound so that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says do you know what this is do you know what this is and they replied by saying قلنا الله ورسوله أعلم Allah and his messenger they know best and then he replied صلى الله عليه وسلم by saying هذا حجر رمي به في النار منذ سبعين خريفا فهو يحوي في النار الآن الآن تنتهي إلى قعرها رواه مسلم the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم went on to mention that that was the sound of a stone a stone was dropped into the hellfire and that stone has been fallen for the time of 70 years الآن now it has reached the base or the bottom of the hellfire ponder upon that this is what made those companions not sleep at night this is what made our salaf be fearful where even they would see the fire because of these type of ahadith ponder upon the size a stone falling if we was to go to the highest building today in the world and you was to drop a stone then how long would it take to drop or to reach the bottom seconds just ponder upon the image just ponder upon the example of what the messenger sallallahu wasallam gave a stone has been fallen for 70 years not an hour not a week not a month but for 70 years and it has reached the bottom now so how is such a creation fueled how and the answer to that is by men and stone qala allah azza wa jal inna alladhina kafaru la tughni anhum amwalahum wala auladuhum min allahi shay'a wa ulaika hum wuqudun nar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says verily those who disbelieve Neither their properties or their offsprings will avail them against Allah whatsoever, and they will be the fuel of the hellfire. Likewise, we have the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِمْ لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to those individuals regarding bringing something similar to the Qur'an, He says, and... But if you do not do it, and they can never do it, meaning bringing something similar to the Qur'an, then fear fire whose fuel is of men and stones. Whose fuel is of men and stone. The companions and the salaf, they used to fear that these verses that they hear, that perhaps they were the fuel. That perhaps fearful that this great creation of the hellfire is being fueled by men and stone that they may be amongst those men fearful then how is our state today what about us what guarantee do we have that we will not be from that fuel so this is why we say Ikhwan, we should take heed the whole purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Ahl al-Ilm have mentioned regarding the punishment of Allah is to frighten his ibad, to frighten his slaves in order for them to stay away that which he has made haram. When we hear about the hellfire and its descriptions, it should have an effect on our heart and it should be able to cause us to leave off those things which are unlawful. And the nature of the hellfire is punishment is not light. From the wisdom of Allah, the way that He has orchestrated the punishment of the hellfire, it will not be light. قال الله عز وجل أولئك الذين اشتروا الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة فلا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينصرون. Allah سبحانه وتعالى He mentions. It is they that have 
brought out the life of this world for the price of the hereafter. Their torment shall not be lightened and neither will they have any form of help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so taste. Tayyib, no increase shall be given except in punishment. A punishment, ikhwan, which will not be light, but it only increases. Likewise, ikhwan, this hellfire, it has an effect upon us in this life. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned, اِشْتَكَتِ النَّالِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا فَقَالَتْ رَبِّي أَكَلَ بَعْدِ بَعْضًا فَأَذَنَ لِي بِنَفَسَيْنِ نَفَسَ فِي الشِّتَاءِ وَنَفَسَ فِي السَّيْفِ فَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنْ حَرِّ وَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الزَّمْ أَهِيرِ رواه البخاري The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the hellfire complained, complained to his Lord regarding the extent, the extreme heat in the hellfire. And he said, oh my Lord, part of me is eating up other parts. Fanafisni, And the closest translation that you can get for nafisni is, oh Allah, allow me to breathe. Allow me to breathe. To let off or to reduce some of that heat. So the Messenger وسلم, went on to say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it to take two breaths. One in the winter and one in the summer. And then he said, this is the cause of the severe heat and the bitter cold that you experience. So next time when you have that bitter cold or that extreme heat, then reflect upon this hadith. Likewise, Ikhwan, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, Al-Humma min fayhil jahannam the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned fever, when one suffers from a fever, is from the breath of the hellfire. So cool it with water. Effects that the Jahannam have upon our life. Now we want to mention regarding the inhabitants of the hellfire. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned مَا بَيْنَ مَنْكِبَيْ الْكَافِرِ فِي النَّارِ مَسِيرْتُ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامِ لِلْرَاقِبِ رواه مسلم The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned the distance between the two shoulders of the non-believer in the hellfire will be like a three-day journey for a swift rider. Likewise, he also mentions وَإِنَّ دِرْسُهُ مِثْلُ أُحُدِ that the molar teeth of the disbeliever in the hellfire will be the size of Uhud. Does anybody know what Uhud means? Mount Uhud. Mount Uhud is in Medina. A huge mountain. That anywhere you are in Medina, you can see that mountain if the hotel is not stopping your view. A huge mountain. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Dirsul Kafir, that the molar teeth of the Kafir will be that size. So after hearing that, the only thing that you can think of is how big will his body be? How big will his head be? What is the wisdom? And also the Messenger has mentioned, وَإِنَّ مَجْلِسَهُ مِنْ جَهَنَّمْ كَمَا بَيْنَ مَكَّةَ وَمَدِينَةَ It mentions, that the place that where he will sit in the hellfire, that distance or that size will be like from the distance from Mecca and Medina. And the distance between Mecca and Medina is about 400 kilometers. That will be the size of the area that he sits. So who are these individuals? Who are the individuals that will be in the hellfire? Our Messenger وسلم, has informed us of the individuals that will be in the hellfire. So it's upon us when we hear these ahadith that we make sure and stay away from those type of attributes that these individuals have. And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I went to the jannah and I saw more of the people of the fukara and I went to the nar and I saw more of the people of the nisa. 
The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I looked into paradise and I saw the majority of the inhabitants of paradise were the poor people. And when I looked into the hellfire or shown the hellfire, the majority of the inhabitants were women. Do we leave the hadith general? Did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leave it at that? No. In another hadith, he has mentioned why. وَرَأَيْتُ النَّارِ فَإِذَا أَكْثَرُ أَحْلِهَا النِّسَاءِ يَكْفُرُونَ كِيلْ أَيَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ قَالْ يَكْفُرُونَ الْعَشِيرَةِ وَيَكْفُرُونَ الْإِحْسَانِ لَوْ أَحْسَنَ لَوْ أَحْسَنَتْ إلَى إِحْدَاهُنَّ الدَّهْرِ ثُمَّ رَأَتْ مِنْكَ شَيْئًا قَالَتْ مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْكَ خَيْرًا قَدْ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم explained regarding these those women that are in the hellfire. Ibn Abbas stated that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I looked into the hellfire and the majority of the dwellers were women. Who were ungrateful. So it was questioned, or the Messenger وسلم, was questioned, did they disbelieve? Were they ungrateful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied by saying, they were ungrateful to their husbands. And they were ungrateful upon the favors that was done for them. And if you had always been good to one of them, then she saw something from you which was not to her liking, then she would say, I have never seen any good from you at all. Something which is very easy to fall into, sisters. Something very easy on the tongue. But look at the consequence. The Messenger Sallallahu explained that the majority of the inhabitants of the hellfire are women. And this is the reason that he gave. So we do not take these ahadith and say, well, that's not me. And we do not point a finger at anybody. But we take the same methodology of the companions. The companions, when they would hear things regarding punishment, they would be fearful. They would not be individuals that say, ah, khalas, we are the companions of the Messenger, وسلم, we have got salvation. Even when they were promised paradise, even with the fact that they were promised paradise, they were still fearful. Hasn't that tremendous statement, which I always mention, which I always mention and there's no harm in mentioning again to show you the virtues of the companions and of this man Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an when he said law nada munada kullukum tadkhulu aljanna illa wahid qad dhanantu ana hu he said radiallahu ta'ala an that if the caller was to call all of you will enter paradise except for one then I would have thought I was that individual and this is who? Umar radiallahu ta'ala an who was promised Jannah upon the tongue of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Umar anta fil Jannah Umar you are in paradise and yet he still felt this way but one could argue and say that the news of him being in paradise never reached him so this is why he reacted in this way then we say I'll give you another example. Regarding the names of the munafiqeen was given to a companion after the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was fearful that maybe he may be amongst one of those individuals that were named as being a hypocrite. So he went to the companion and questioned and questioned and it was bothering him. It was bothering him fearful that it may be him and then he was told that you are not from them what is the shade what is the moral what is the point the point is that when we hear these ahadith and ayat we should apply them to ourselves regardless whatever station that we have because there is no guarantee that we are free from this it is a reminder and if it was a reminder for the best of the people after the messenger وسلم, then definitely it is a reminder for ourselves. Likewise, Ikhwan, from those individuals that are in the fire or in the hellfire are those who take their own lives. They commit suicide. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man katala nafsuhu bi hadidatin fa hadidatuhu fi yadihi yatawajjuhu biha fi batni fi nari jahannam khalidun muqallida fiha abada wa man shariba samma أو سما فقتل نفسه فهو يتحساه في النار جهنم خالد مخلد فيها أبدا 
ومن ترد من جبل فقتل نفسه فهو يترد في النار جهنم خالد مخلد فيها أبدا رواه مسلم عند ثرة أبو حر رضي الله تعالى عن لمسجد صلى الله عليه وسلم has mentioned he who kills himself with a steel weapon will be eternal inhabitants of the hellfire and he will have a weapon in his hand and he will be thrusting that weapon into his stomach forever and he who kills himself by drinking poison will sip that poison in the fire forever and he who, himself, he who kills himself by throwing himself off from the top of a mountain will constantly be falling in the fire forever this is the re, this is the jaza or this is the punishment of the one that takes his own life it's not from our aqidah ikhwan it's not from our belief that it, we take our own souls regardless of whatever these individuals today these criminals and these mujrimin may fool our youth to kill themselves in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say by doing this you will reach paradise la wallah it's not from our deen not from the quran and not from the sunnah likewise ikhwan the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned ahlan nar khamsa the people of, fire, of the hellfire are five. And then he went on to mention the weak, the one who lacks self-restraint, who blindly follows and does not care regarding his family nor his property. The one does not show himself except that he shows himself with greed. And likewise, he is deceitful even in the small things. A deceitful person. Huh? No, we're still on two. طيب. The per- the first one, the weak and the one who lacks self-restraint, who blindly follows and has no care regarding his family, all of his properties. طيب. The second one is the one that does not show himself except by his greed and he is deceitful even in the small things. Three, the person who would betray you in the morning and in the evening regarding your family and your property. For the liar, the one that lies. And five, the one who is in the habit of abusing people and using obscene and foul language. So when we hear these ahadith, and we know that these are the things that bring you into the hellfire, these are the things that are, will bring you into punishment, then we as mu'minun, as individuals that Allah has given us intellect, then we stay away from those type of things. The food ikhwan of the hellfire. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ لَا يُسْمِنُوا وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, no food will be for them except a, pony, a, a poisonous thorny plant, طيب, which will neither nourish them or avail them against any form of hunger. He has mentioned, likewise, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tuqati, wa illa wa muslimun. Regarding that verse, طيب, fear Allah is deserved to be feared and do not die except in the state of submission, meaning a Muslim. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi has mentioned وَلَوْ أَنَّ قَطْرَةً مِنَ الزَّقُومِ قُطِرَتْ فِي الدَّارِ الدُّنْيَا لَأَفْسَدَتْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مَا عَاشِيَتُهُمْ وَمَا عَاشِيَهُمْ فَكَيْفَ بِمَنْ يَكُونُ تَعَامَهُ The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi has mentioned Regarding the Zakum طيب, Regarding the Zakum That tree that they will eat from The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi has mentioned the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if a drop of zaqum طيب, would, have, would, uh, would have been fallen or would have fallen into this any one of the houses in this life, in this world, then it would have spoiled all of the provisions of this world. One drop of zaqum was to fall in one of the homes. Then it would destroy all of the provisions. So that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to mention, then how will it be for the one whose food will be zaqoom. How will it be for the individual that eat that zaqoom? 
Likewise, the Messenger وسلم, has mentioned that they, from the blazing fire, they will be given drink from a, bo- a boiling spring. This is what they drink. And likewise, they, the food which they have, as the Messenger وسلم, has mentioned, will be the pus that comes out from the wound. The wound the wounds of the individuals where the pus comes out, this is what they will drink. So Ikhwan, we can go on, but these are just some of the things that used to make our Salaf reflect. Fearful of these, having yaqeen, having yaqeen and certainty, as if for those they can see the hellfire with their eyes, Believing in the statements of the Messenger وسلم, regarding the description of the hellfire, help them to stay away from Ma'asi. And Ikhwan, we should act upon what we hear. These ahadith and this knowledge that reaches us, then we should act upon it. Take heed from this hadith which I'm about to mention. He mentions an Usama ibn Zaydin. Qal, سمت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يؤتى برجل يوم القيامة فيلقى في النار فدندلكوا فدندلكوا أكتاب بطنه فيدور بها كما يدور الحمار بالرحاة فيجتمع إليه أحلى النار فيقول يا فلان ما لك ألن تكون تعمر بالمعروف وتنحل المنكر فيقول بلا وكنت آمر بالمعروف ولا ولا آتي وأنها عن المنكر وآتي. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has mentioned on the day of judgment a man will be brought forth and thrown into the hellfire. As a result of this, his his intestines will come out of his belly and then he will circulate, holding his intestines like a donkey. Going round a mill. His companions in the hellfire will say. The companions that will see him in the hellfire, they will say. Oh, so and so. What is this? Oh, so and so, what is this? They will be amazed to see him in the hellfire. Did you not ask the people to do good and to avoid the evil? He will say that is true. However, I told others to do it, but I did not do it myself. I used to, I forbade them from doing evil, but I did it myself. It's not enough, Ikhwan, for us just to merely learn that which is right and wrong and have knowledge of right and wrong, yet we go against our knowledge, what we know. We must act upon our knowledge. We must practice what we preach as they say. And just Ikhwan, to finish off, I want to bring you some fawaid regarding the Akhirah and regarding that travel and that journey that we are going. Then I want to mention some athar, some narrations regarding the time that we have here now and how we should be regarding this day where every single one of us will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one will escape that standing so how were the salaf how were they in regarding their time while they were living here how do they live preparing for this day and this is what I wish to mention today, Ikhwan. First and foremost, know the importance of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by time. In many different, in many different ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, وَالدُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى He says, by the afternoon, or, and likewise, and by the night when it is still. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ By time, Verily, mankind is in a state of loss. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears upon his creation, then know that that particular thing that he's swearing upon 
has, of, has great importance. Kala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ni'matan maqboonun fihima kathiru minan nas, al siha wal faragh. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned two blessings many of mankind are neglectful health and free time. Al Imam Jawzi, rahimullah, Al Ibn al Jawzi, rahimullah ta'ala, he mentions, Qad yakun al insan sahiha, wa la yakun mutafarriqa. He said, Perhaps a person will be healthy, but he does not have free time. And perhaps an individual will have free time, but he doesn't have the health. These are two blessings, Ikhwan. These are two blessings. And he mentions that whomsoever uses these, these two blessings to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is a blissful and blessed person. And whomsoever uses these two things, these blessings of having good health and likewise free time in obedience, or oh sorry, in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person is a wretched person and has wronged himself. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَزُولُوا قَدَمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْعَلَ عَنْ عُمْرِي فِيمَا أَفْنَى وَعَنْ عِلْمِهِ فِيمَا فَعَلْ وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اِكْتَسَبَ وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَ وَعَنْ جِسْمِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَى The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that on يوم القيامة the feet of the slave will not move will not move up until he is questioned regarding four things. Regarding his life and how he spent his life. Regarding this knowledge that he had and how he acted upon his knowledge. And on his wealth, how he gathered his wealth and how he spent his wealth. And the last one regarding his body and how we use this body. We all know, Ikhwan, that this body that we have is a aman, is a trust from Allah. And this body itself does not belong to us. And this body that we have, this shell that we have, Taib, is loyalty lies to Allah Azza wa Jalla, not to us. And the proof of that is that the individual. On Yawm al when he knows what will be awaiting him from by way of punishment, will try everything to help himself. Will try every thing that he can do to save himself. Even so, he will say to Allah, the Katibin, those angels that have monitored and wrote down regarding me I do not accept that which they say so then Allah will say to him then who do you want as a witness then he will reply myself then Allah Azza wa Jal will cause his mouth to close and then his body shall speak the A'la the body parts will speak and bear witness the body has loyalty to the haqq and to Allah Azza wa Jalla, not to us. Remember that. Remember when you are putting your body through what you are putting it through. Remember when you are falling into sin. That this same thing reflect these fingers, these eyes, these legs will speak against you. Those limbs shall speak on the day of judgment. And then when the mouth will be given back, he will say, woe be to you. It was you that I was trying to save. So Ikhwan, you will be questioned regarding this body that you have. Ibn Abbas, he mentions that the Messenger wasallam said, اِخْتَرَمْ خَمْسَ قَبْلَ خَمْس Take advantage of five before five. Your youth before your old age. Your health before your sickness your richness before your poverty and your spare time before you are occupied and likewise take from your life before your death take from your life before your death ikhwan the, the intent of that is 
not that you merely live when you eat and drink and enjoy without realizing the reality of why you are here. Take from your life meaning that strive in righteousness and goodness before death comes. Likewise, we have the statement of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Rahimullah, when he mentions, Inna layla wa nahar ya'malani feek, fa'mal fihima. He mentioned, and look at the wisdom. He said, The night and day is working upon you. How can the night and day work upon us, Ikhwan? The night and day works upon us because the day and the night alternates. So it's time. And time is leaving us, meaning it's working upon us because we are nothing but time. The time that we are born and the time that we are going to die is an appointed time. So we are living that time. So every single day a day goes, a part of us is going. So the day and night is working upon us. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, he said, fi hima. He said, so you work in regarding to the day and night. Meaning that you work as well. Like the way the day and the night is working on you, you work on them. Meaning that do not let the day and night go except that you are working in righteous deeds. Likewise, we have the statement of Ibn Mas'ud. He mentions, Man, ma nadimtu ala shay'in nadami ala yawmin gharabati shams naqasa fihi ajli wa lam yazid fihi amali. He mentions Ibn Mas'ud that I was not more regretful and remorseful that when the sun would set upon me and a part of me had gone. A part of me had gone, meaning a part of his life has gone. And I did not increase. And I did not increase in my actions, meaning righteous actions. Regretful that the sun would set upon him and he did not do any form of righteous actions. This is just one time, one day. So our question is, how many times has the sun set upon me and you and your families and yet we have not increased in our actions? How many times has the sun set upon us and we have not increased in our knowledge? We are in the same level. They were remorseful because they did not increase in their actions. The hal, the state of individuals today, not only are they not carrying out actions, they are sinning. What about the one that the sun sets upon him and he has been disobedient to his Lord? Leave alone, not carrying out righteous actions, but the sun sets upon you and you are falling short regarding Allah's rights. You are falling short in those things which has been made obligatory upon you. And even worse, that you may be even sinning. La ilaha illallah sallallahu alayhi afiyah. Likewise, we have the statement of Hassan al-Basri radiallahu ta'ala. He mentions, Ya ibn Adam, innama anta ayyam. When he mentions that Al Hassan al Basri, he mentions after this in this book, the print, Radiallahu Ta'ala An. And we know that Radiallahu Ta'ala An is specific and khas for the companions. But there are some from Ahlul Ilm that refer to this even for those that came after the companions. But which is ma'roof with the ulama, or ulama ana, that that is there, that rida is khas. When we say radiallahu ta'ala an is for the companions of the messengers alayhi wa sallam. Tayyib, Hassan al-Basri, he mentions, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, you are nothing but days. And if a day has gone, then a part of you has gone. We are nothing but days. Every single time a day goes, a part of us is dying. Likewise, we have the statement of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. حياتك أنفا أنفاس أو أنفاس تعد فكلما مضى نفس منها انقصت 
in tukisat bihi juz'a fa tusbihu fi naqsin wa tumsi bi mithli fa ma laka min aqlin tuhissu bihi zur'a yumituka ma yuhyika fi kulli sa'atin he mentions that your life Ali ibn Abi Talib he mentions that your life is nothing that the air that you breathe so count the breaths that you take for every time you take a breath a part of you is going that which keeps you alive oh sorry that فتصبح في نقص afwan. so you wake in the morning and a part of you has gone and you reach the evening and a part of you has gone so what kind of intellect do you have طيب فما لك من أقل so what kind of intellect do you have that you do not be aware of this that you do not reflect and be aware of this that what is keeping you alive is likewise killing you what is keeping you alive is killing you what does that mean meaning that each each every every single person has been given a number of breaths that he breathes and once that time is up he will be dead but we need to breathe in order to keep to stay alive so that particular thing that we are doing breathing which is keeping us alive is in actuality killing us because every time we take a breath then a part of us is going look at the wisdom ikhwan of these companions likewise i want to mention ikhwan the statement of of um, abdul rahman ibn mahdi regarding hamad ibn salama he mentions lawqi li hamad ibn salama innaka tamut ghadan ma qadara an yuzid fi amal shay'a is mentioned to hamad ibn salama if it was said to him he said if it was said to hamad ibn salama you would die tomorrow then Hamad ibn Salama could not increase in his righteous actions. If it was said to him, you're going to die tomorrow, he couldn't do any more. It was said, regarding him, كَانَ مَشْغُولًا إِمَّا يُحَدِّثْ أَوْ يَقْرَى أَوْ يُسَبِّحْ أَوْ يُسَلِّ وَقَدْ كَسَّمَ النَّهَارْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مَاتَ حَمَادِ بِنْ سَلَمَ وَهُوَ فِي الصَّلَاحِ He mentions that he was extremely busy during the day he used to divide his day either by narrating hadith or reciting the quran or praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or likewise praying and it mentions that hamad ibn salama when he died he died while he was in salah while he was praying and this is a sign of husnul khatim a good ending husnul khatim that we should all supplicate for Husn al Khatim for a good ending. But Ikhwan, that Husn al Khatim will not come except by hard work. While you are living and while you still have the time, then you should work righteous actions and stay away from haram. Having the Husn al Khatim, a good ending, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your soul in an honorable way then you must work for that you must work for that and if you analyze the salaf those that died in their salah those that died by performing righteous actions those individuals that had a good ending those individuals that were killed while they were reciting the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of this is tawfiq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to receive that type of tawfiq ikhwan, then you must be righteous servants. Righteous servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows regarding the state of an individual when he dies. We cannot look into the hearts, but we judge with that which is apparent. And I narrate this because what I am saying now made me think when I lost a very close and beloved brother to me and a beloved brother to many and only Allah knows I'm not talking about the ilm al-ghayb 
Only Allah knows the state. But one of our brothers died in front of us. And when analyzed after the shock and after the hurt and then analyze the nature of his death then surely has our our scholars and ahl al-ilm from them Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi has mentioned that for you now it is hard upon the hearts because it's something which just happened all of a sudden but if you analyze the nature of it then it's only khair upon khair then it made me realize that if I was to wish for even something similar in dying in such a way, then you must work hard, Abu Idris. You must work and strive hard in your righteous actions. Because when I analyze the life of the brother and how he was and what he did, then it made me realize that such an ending did not come just about like this. This ending came and only Allah knows best is because the hard work he put into his life. Clinging unto the book of Allah and to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Staying away from haram. Calling to the sunnah and only Allah knows best regarding the affairs of the unseen. I do not know but we judge with that which is apparent. The point which I am stri- trying to strike to my brothers and sisters Whatever you do in this life is what you will receive back. It's as simple as that. How you live here and what you do here, you will receive that in the hereafter. You will receive that in the grave and in the hereafter. So you take the choice. How smart you want to be. What you want to put forth in front of Allah, what you want to present. Because the time when your soul is taken, it finishes there. Then the only thing after that is, whatever you did, whatever baggage you have, this is the baggage you will bring in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you choose what type of baggage you want to bring in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what I wish to say to myself, a reminder to myself. And I keep on saying, I am not better than you. Fakir in Allah Azza wa Jal. So I, ask, I put this to myself first and to my brothers and to my sisters. That whatever effort you put in here and how hard you strive, this is what you will receive in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. فاستغفروه فإنه غفور الرحيم الله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين